No worries. Hey everyone, how you going? Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you had some funny looking thing on your head. I thought you'd had a haircut or had your hair done or something. Yes, no. <laughs> Just cold. <laughs> just cold. Just cold. I tell you what, it has been friggin' freezing. Look, uh, so cold, I've had wait. to bring in a trusty heater just to try and keep me warm. <laughs> I forgot my gloves. Oh, I was no. Like, oh, my God. Just uh, hold a cup of tea. No worries. Hey, how you going, everyone? Hello. How you going? Welcome to the show. Fantastic to have you guys on board. And um, and a big shout out to um, Sue out there, I believe. Yes. Speaking of cold hands, I believe... Oh, God, that would be a very cold hand. <laughs> oh. I believe, Sue, you're making some progress with your hand and you're able to take it out of the... Yeah, out of, out of your, the little um, uh, splint, splint. For um, physio and that, so that's, that's so, actually awesome to hear. That's a magnificent, um, uh, what do you call it, positive movement forward. Mm, <laughs> definitely. So that's, that's great. And, and speaking of um, things off, Things you, off. You, you don't seem to be very. Um... <laughs> no, I'm not actually. I I actually had a, I had a phone phone um, medical appointment today on the phone, um, and the doctor said to me, he said, uh, are, you, "Are you wearing your brace?" And I went, "Yep." <laughs> 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 ah, dear me. So, um, no, he actually said, he asked me actually if I'd had any x rays recently. I went, well, no, I haven't come in. So, so he's going to send me off for some x rays and, um, and hope, and we'll have another phone hook up next week sometime. Oh, nice. <clears throat> but we'll have to tee, tee that up wherever I am on the road. So, yes. Yeah. So, hopefully, um, that'll be some good news for me for progress. But it's feeling great. I mean, my ligaments and my neck are feeling a lot, lot stronger. Um, I only take it off when I'm I'm sitting around in low risk environments. <laughs> so we'll see how right, we you go. You think sitting near Neil's low risk? <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but a, a big shout out to anyone else who's on the injury list. Um, we got F um, Phil Drew and uh, Dick Yates. I Dick said he was making some good progress. Oh, good. Yep. So Charlotte's still there. So <laughs> she's, little Charlotte. Yeah. She's itching to get that cast off. <laughs> Is it the is it the eighth yet? I'm like, no, haven't secretly told her we're still not back in Perth on the eighth that we had to get the appointment changed. Oh no, shh, don't tell her that. <laughs> uh, so that's great. So um, what have we got for the show today, Jess? Well, today uh, we are talking all things adjustments with the front brake and clutch. Yeah, awesome. And we just get to and, use our two little fingers. Yeah, and um, actually, I think it'd be uh, this is a spot on show for you for timing yes um because jess had her first crack on her new trs yesterday i did i finally got the courage it's <laughs> taken a lot of courage to get on that bike because i was just like yeah. super scared of how fast and was yeah. it gonna be a scary are, are you haven't scratched it yet no 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 i gave neil the word of warning when he was putting it away last night I'm like don't scratch my bike <laughs> but um no no scratches yeah. yet but yeah. it was actually um so this is just straight out the box, you haven't, the box. you haven't done any setup yet no no nah. setup no nothing um yeah. and it so. just rode beautifully oh awesome like awesome it wasn't as scary and um zippy yeah, as i as thought it thought. was gonna be yeah yeah. Um, it's still a little bit jerky, but that's just me getting to understand the bike and the clutch yep. and all those sorts of things, yeah. which is understandable. And a bit, but, of, bit of setup. But yeah. it wasn't, um, it was nice. It was a really nice bike to ride. Oh, awesome. Like, and I mean, I'm not no expert, like, don't get me wrong. I've only no, just, hey, but... I've only just ridden a little red, really. <laughs> but for it to come out of the box and to be able to jump it, I mean, kickstarting it. Oh my God. Yeah. A couple of times it was just first pop. It was yeah. just like, oh my God. Oh, this is great. great. Okay, it wasn't great. I kept stalling it. Huh? No, no, but, you, but... A, a brand new, a new, new bikes, you always, they always stall straight up because the engine's all tight, everything's tight. But it does help if yeah. you remember to turn the choke off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's little things I still have to remember, okay? Yeah. But and no, it, it was really good. a really nice bike. So wow. if anyone wants to have a ride of it at the trial, it's going to be down at the Blackwood. Yep. Um, yep. Where I'm sure and it will get quite christened with uh, it, scratches. It, it'll probably end up with a bit of mud. Might and have to send uh, Frank Patane some uh, a, a bill. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, and and I believe you have given it a name. Oh yes, yes, she's called Goldie after Gold Golden Horn. Goldie Horn. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've just got the gold little fork things. So I thought, oh, oh nice. perfect. Never had a little red, now I've got goldy. Oh, cool. That's awesome. So, yeah, lever adjustment. So, this is going to be yes, perfect. Yes, okay. For I'll you, try Jess. and remember to concentrate so, while answering. <clears throat> So Comments. yeah, so you may need to pay attention. Not that you don't normally, but um, so Neil will, will flick flick to the other um, uh, camera when when he when it's appropriate. But I've got a few things here to show you. So the 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 first thing is is um, lever adjustment. So I'm basically going to cover lever adjustments now. There's 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 quite a lot you can do to set your levers up. Um, first of all, you can shift your master cylinder up and down or left to right, depending which way you want to describe it, on your handlebars. Um, so that's the first thing you can do. So where you position your uh, master cylinder um, affects your lever adjustments as well. So that's the first thing to think about. Now, if you move your master cylinder as far out, so it's basically up against the grips, yeah. then that's going to give you a very um, sharp, snappy, um, quick quick action. If you shift your master cylinder further in towards the centre of the handlebars, then you your way, because of the handlebar grips, your hand is obviously going to be in the same position all the time. So as you move the master cylinder into the centre of the handlebars, then your clutch finger or your brake finger, which you're only ever going to use yes. one finger, um, you that will be at a different position on the lever from a leverage point of view. So the, the further out you are on the lever, um, the easier the lever is going to be pulled in because it gives you more yep. leverage. That's why they call it a lever. lever. Nice. <laughs> um, and it will make the action slower if you're further out. If you're right in close to the mast cylinder, then it's only going to be short movements, so it's going to be quick and snappy. Ah, that's why mine was feeling snappy yesterday. It could be. So it could be just a simple matter of setup. So, so that's the first thing you need to think about. Now, the other thing you need to think about is... When you now, what I normally do is I stand on the bike, put the bike on a on a stand or on a milk crate or something like that. Mm -hmm. Stand on your bike, stretch yourself out so your arms are straight, and get your bum down close to the rear guard as where you'd be at the maximum stretch point if you were going down something. Mm -hmm. And then what I do is I set my levers so when my finger touches the top of the lever. The the this crease in your finger crease. is touching the top of the lever. Then when you pull when you pull the clutch in, if say it's the clutch or the brake, it doesn't matter. Now you'll always oh and I'll explain this a little bit further down the track, you'll always have a little bit of slop or slack take up, slack, whatever word you want to take it, in your levers. So when you start to take the slack up, your finger has started started to move. Now your strength if you can see that, the strength in your finger is off this knuckle. So that's the point you want to hinge your yes. lever off. So you Ah, so not just off your fingertips. No, not off uh. not off this one. Right? You want this one here. So you really want your lever in here but pulling at that point. Now, if you don't want the lever too close to your handlebars that you're actually trying to bend this knuckle Right, and that gives you, you you can't get a good feel of the of the levers yep. that way. So, you effectively want to be hinging this knuckle, and have your lever sitting in here somewhere, just on the take up point, mm. and then you've got that movement. Yeah. So well, if only my husband had passed on this vital information a lot sooner. <laughs> Huh, my trials career could have been a lot different. <laughs> so <sighs> who knows? Who knows? So. I've I've got a master cylinder here. Now I've got a whole pile of things to show you here. So if Neil wants to flick Yep, yep flicked it's over. we've flicked he's, over. He's already flicked over. So so here we got a this one's actually a clutch master cylinder. Um and like I was talking about, if you've got your master cylinder close to your handlebar grips, then where your finger sits might be right in close here. If you shift your master cylinder further in on your handlebars, then your hand, your lever's going to be your finger's going to be on the lever further out, giving you more more clearance. So, the first adjustment you should do is to set the lever's stop point. 
So where the lever stops. So you, you understand what I mean by that, Jess? So when the, the lever is out, yep. it's stopped there. Mm-hmm. So that's your stop point. And, and like I said, you want your finger just sitting on that crease point when the, the lever is just sitting out. Yep. Now, how you adjust the stop point is by this thing here. Ah. So this is your stopper. So the first thing you need to do is either wind this in or wind it out so that when when the master cylinder is sitting on your handlebars, that the lever is at the position that you want it. Yep. Now, I'm talking about that crease point there as a, as a general start point. You know, you depending on the length of your fingers, you know, you but that's generally the good start point. Yep. So then, when you you can see there's a little bit of take up mm-hmm. in there. So when you take that up, your fingers starts to bend a bit there like yep. that. And then when you pull it right in, Bob Jarney. So that's the first one you adjust. Now the next important thing you must have with your and this 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 applies to both your brake and your clutch. And it also applies to the rear brake, and I'll talk about that in a little bit further. Is you need to have, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of slot there. Yeah. Now you must always make sure you've got a, a, a fraction, if not more, a mil or so, um, in here. So it's not actually slot. pressing the muscle on the piston in. Yeah. Now I'll show you the reason. Now what, so. It can be quite deceiving with the front master cylinders um, because you've got the pin here on mm-hmm. the on the lever that pushes this pin, yeah, and then this pin here actually pushes the master cylinder. Um, uh, what do we call that? The the cylinder, the piston, the piston, master cylinder piston, and in here is a little spring. So it actually can be quite deceiving because you've got this spring loaded load. Yeah. Now I'll pull it apart just to show you so you can see the difference. Yeah. Pop that out there. Take the lever out. Now whoops, something went down there. Just that, that's that's pin that's on your your lever. Now on on your lever if you can see, there's a locking nut there. Mm-hmm. Now this this pin here, or screwed out, and then you 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 adjust that to get that little bit of slot that I was talking about, <clears throat> and then you just lock the lock nut up when you've got it at the right spot there. Now there, that that pin there pushes your master cylinder pin, but in here. Is actually a little spring. Hold it as far away from the camera as you can down low okay. so you can see it. So, just so that you can see it, I'll roll this back a bit so you can see that. So this is this is the pin that the lever pushes on, and it has a spring on it there, and that's what sometimes you get a, a deceiving feel off it. So that spring there, and then that pushes. See the black circle bit there? That is actually your cylinder, the master cylinder piston. And this goes in there, and you can see that little bit of spring loading. Mm-hmm. So you, that's the, the little gap you need. If you can, I hope, does that? Yep, I that, can see that. that. You can see that, that makes sense. So when you adjust your um, your lever... When you're adjusting this, you come back to the main camera. Yeah. When you're adjusting that, you um, you 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 adjust that rod in, and then that gives you that little bit of a slap between the the two. Does that make sense to you? No, not really. <laughs> not really. We'll get no, that's there. That's good. We'll that's get there good. eventually. But it, and it, the reason why I thought it was important to cover this is because. Inevitably, I find sometimes people might have a little bit of a hydraulic problem with their bike, whether it be the um, the um, cylinder piston bypassing and they're not quite getting the braking or the clutch feel that they need. 
and something's not quite right. So what they do is they adjust that rod in uh. and it pushes it in. And then the master cylinder, just flick back to this camera here, Neil. The, the master cylinder piston needs to be fully out and stopped at the stop point because in, in here is where your brake fluid or mineral oil, depending on what, what bike you've got, sits in. Mm -hmm. And if this piston doesn't come all the way out to the stop point, if there's any air in your line or you need to replace it with a bit of brake fluid, there's a, there's a little bypass hole where the brake fluid or the mineral oil can go down into the line or, or the air can come up. Now, if, you, if you've got the piston, if you've adjusted your lever and the piston's pushed in a little bit, that'll block the hole off and the air can't come back up. And then, then you'll have air in your line, and you 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 can't work out why your clutch or your brakes are, uh, are feeling funny. It's, so, so that's why it's absolutely important to have a little bit of free play in in your brake and your clutch levers like that. Yeah. So that that's the important bit there. Now, if you want to flick back to the camera, Neil, the here, as long as I don't go and lose all my bits and pieces. Oh, well, you see, because you don't have a tray, you've had a nut or a bolt or I, something fall down. I did. I, so, technically, really... I haven't um, got my trusty tray. No, you don't. No. Nah. Oh, well, the I'll, joys of when the show turns 18, you just instantly forget stuff now that you're old. <laughs> That's right. It's episode 18. We're 18. Yes. We're legal. I know. I forgot the balloons. I forgot the gin. I forgot the party hats. Damn it. <laughs> Have to save that for our 21st uh, when we're officially, like, legal, so, illegal, legal, now, legal. I've, I've grabbed, um, are we on the... Yep, we're on the camera. We're on the camera now. Well, we're on both cameras, aren't we? So I've just grabbed a rear brake lever to show you that the same principle applies to your rear brake lever. Now, on now 90% of levers, This remember I talked about the stopper? Um... So on your rear brake lever, that's your stopper there. Now, normally you have a little bit of a spring lever pulling the rear brake lever down, and that'll stop there. So you Now on your, on your rear brake, what I do, when you're in a standing position on your bike, in a comfortable standing position on your bike, adjust the stopper on your rear brake lever so that you can comfortably just... Sweep, sweep, I'd call it sweep. Mm -hmm. Sweep your foot on the foot pegs across onto the rear brake lever without having to lift your foot up to go onto the lever. Ah, well, look, there's another handy tip my husband never informed me of. <laughs> Jeez Louise, no wonder why I was never progressing in my trials. Well, there career. you go. That's why you've not, you're not winning the world championships at the moment, Jess. Years, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if oh, someone no. decided no, to listen. share the joy of this... Hey, hang on, we'll what? save our domestic for yeah, no Sounds do, like a plan. No domestics here, all right? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, on your rear brake lever, the, yes. the stopper point, you should set your rear brake lever so when you're standing on your bike and you're comfortable in the normal standing pose, mm -hmm. that you can just shift your foot on and off the rear brake lever without having to lift. The the other point is you don't want your front brake your rear brake lever too low, so that when you're going to put your brakes yeah, yeah. on you've got to really lean kind lean of forward. forward. So so that's the trick. So so that's your stopper point. Now I do make there's a there's an exception to every rule as there always mm -hmm. is. There are some gases, some of the earlier gases and some of the earlier Shercos, they don't actually have a stopper on the lever so there ain't a stopper there to adjust um you could you can make them up um but the later levers certainly on the well on both the gasser and the shirko later levers they yep. have stoppers now this the slack adjuster i talked about on the other levers is is this thing here so the rod that pushes up onto your master cylinder is the same very similar it, it, you can wind it in and out on a thread and you've got a locking nut to lock it in, to into position. Again. Move yeah, to the centre. Sorry. I'm getting instructions from my cameraman to, to make sure I'm in the right spot. So um, so you can just that up and down to get your, your slack. Now, same thing. You must have a little bit of slack in your rear brake lever. The same as your front and brake, your front clutch and brake. Now... Rear is probably a little more important. I find they... 
prob- heat up and expand and lock on more than the fronts do. Yeah, Neil Neil makes the point that the rear brake levers tend to heat up and lock on, and and that is true. Um, the if, if there's uh, not enough slack, if there's not enough slack, and that's the reason why you need the slack because it, when you think about it from a, a physics point of view. When you start applying your brakes... Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't, I don't do physics. Oh, well, you're going to have to learn physics, Jess. Oh, right? So, that's it. I so your brake, When you put your foot in the brake, the hydraulic oil pushes the caliper out and the two disc brake pads mm-hmm. squash onto your disc and then they get hot right? and they transfer heat into your caliper and your brake fluid expands because of the heat and then the brake fluid gets pushed back, back up into your masks on the reservoir, right? back up into here. So that's the reason why that piston must always bottom out to allow the hydraulic oil to go back up in there. You see? <sighs> you just learnt something, Jess. Physics, right? So back back to our little camera view. Um, your your master camera. cylinder... Center. Oh, in the centre. Here I go. I'm going to be in the centre again. So... The rod comes up into here. With this one, this is an, uh, an, it's not an old one, but it is an older style master cylinder. It's fairly easy just to get your rod in there. But I just will point out on the newer ones, this is the newer style. You'll see the rubber is on the inside. And um, when, when you put the rod in, uh, the center, when you put the rod in here, sometimes it can be quite deceiving because of the drag of this rubber boot. You think you've actually bottomed out but you haven't so just be mindful of those yeah no worries um so then you got all those other fancy schmancy levers on there for what are they I for i do i have now i'll bring them into shot might be the way to do it ain't eh, now yeah let me bring oh, all look, these into here's me. some levers i prepared earlier now, here's some levers i prepared earlier next time we do this we're going to get a pedicure a manicure a manicure, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. oh, really? <laughs> he gets yeah. one before me? <laughs> right, now I've got a variety of levers here. Um, now, effectively, in very general terms, there's a, generally about three different levels of levers you can buy. All right. Um, so you can go uh, genuine, genuine, which is genuine beta or genuine brake tech, um, as they are now. Um or you can go aftermarket yep. um, type of levers. Which are, genuine gas gas or genuine TRS? Or? Well, no, because they have brake tech. Oh, so they're okay. all brake tech. So other than your beta, so a bit of, bit of um, use, useless information. Oh, uh, we'll save this, people. <laughs> quick, 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 get out in pen and paper. It might come up in a <laughs> trivia game. Hey, it might. You never know. So be, be, standard beta Evos... Um, and, and your older Rev 3s and stuff uh, run Gramica master cylinders. Um, most So basically before, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but um, AJP um, have either closed down or went bust or something's happened. And then Brake, Brake Tech now is a new brand and they now basically have taken over whatever AJP was. So. Yeah. So your older gases and a variety of brands and stuff like that used to run AJP master cylinders. Um, some of the early Beta Rev 380s, um, they had um, AJP master cylinders and stuff like that on. So, so but basically your Beta Evos run uh, Gramicas, your Beta Evo factories run Brake Tech. Okay. Gas Gas, TRS, Sherco... Um, Vertigo, um, pretty pretty or Scorper, pretty well everything else runs brake tech. Yeah. Right. So this is why you got a bit of variety in levers. So this this one here is a Beta um, Gramica standard genuine lever, and you can see by the size of the diameter of the hole, it's it's a little bit different to this one. Now this one here is a genuine brake tech. Um, now you you can see. Um, it has a brass insert here and then a, a European insert there compared to an aftermarket lever which has just got your European levers in there. So you, your genuine levers are in ballpark figures are up in the high 40s, um, nearly 50 bucks. Um, I think 54.90 was what I put in the 
the um, system the other day. The genuine beaters are about 55 bucks. Oh, yeah, actually, the genuine beater ones are fairly expensive. Uh, what are the brake tech ones? Roughly 40. Oh, I think they're For, 49. 40, yeah. Some, something like that. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's a figure. Now, your, neck, your next level lever um, is, is it what they call the Jitsi Race. Now, the Jitsi Race lever. Does it make you go faster? Oh, definitely. It's got red on it, see? Yeah. You're definitely going to go faster with red. Now, the the thing with the Jitsi race lever, if you notice, I don't know if the camera can pick it up where I'm pointing, it actually has a little ball bearing inserted in there. And so that's designed to give you a smooth operation of your of your lever. <clears throat> now, the other thing it has is, an, is a hand adjuster here with a spring. Now, we, Neil doesn't, like these um, from the point of view just be mindful with the spring particularly if you're doing full noise at times and trying to go up steps these may shift a little bit so what we actually do we take the spring off and we put a lock nut on it now the Jitsi race levers you can get these for this one actually is suits the beta Gramica but you can get them for the brake tech and AJP now, they're around the $35 bracket, I believe, mm -hmm. something like that. Then you can go down to your basic lever, which is effectively somewhere around about $24 to $25. Bucks. Um, basically, it looks identical um, to the other levers, um, and and it's, ju it's just a cheaper lever. Now, the other thing you can get... Just get a little teeny tiny one. You can get shorties, right? So Is there any difference? Disadvantage to having a short one to a long one? Uh, only that you get less leverage out here, but very yeah. rarely do you go all the way out here anyway. Now, generally, the the kids, dads, dads buy these for their kids yep. because they just find it's easier for them to, um, to get hold of. The other good thing about them is depending on where you put your master cylinder on your handlebars, when you drop, when you drop your bike, it... Um, the handlebars hit the ground before your lever hits the ground. Ah, so, so it saves a, a lever. Yeah, so it can be handy from that point of view, but of course it's going to be a shorter, shorter leverage. Yeah, we might need those for <clears> the Blackwood <throat> Neil. Yeah. <laughs> now, just a point I'll make out if we're back on this camera. The do they come in gold? Um, you can get them in different Ooh, colours. Um, I've only got exciting. the silver ones here, oh. but you can get them in black, and I think blue and red. So there are a few colours. I think there is gold too mm. coming out. Goldie might need an yeah. upgrade. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, and um, just be just be mindful of levers. And this is probably a fairly good example. I'm not sure if you can see it well. But the shape, the shape of the lever here and where it finishes can vary on different levers. Um, so depending on the lever... Um, and the mass cylinder that it was designed for, you just need to be careful um, the two fit. how they fit. And one point I will make, I'll just pull this out, is there are actually, there are different length pins, these pins. Um, so different master cylinders will have slightly different length pins here. So if you're having a bit of trouble with your lever, it doesn't, feel like it's it's hinging right or whatever just just check all that out to see what brand of lever you've got because there are quite a variety of aftermarket levers you can get s i think you can get f3 levers or pico levers um jitsi levers um those sorts of things so if you're having a bit of trouble just understand there are variances in in levers a little bit yes so there you go you can lever off that Oh, I was going to say you beat me to it because I was going to say we can leave her at there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better leave her at there because you only got a to wrap up the show. Geez, you're joking. I've not had time to have me cup of yet. Oh, right. No. So, so what else have we got? What have we got, Jess? So, we've got yeah. bikes for sale. Um, we've got some new ones coming in. Or yep. we've got the new ones we've in. We've got, got a couple in stock. We've got um, some gases in stock. We've got a beater in stock. Um, there are um, TRSs available. There's good stock of TRSs. Yep. Um, and They're very good bikes. <laughs> nice and, and shiny. 
nice and shiny. And um, Vertigo is landing in, in June. Yep. Um, we've got uh, a, a really nice 218 Evo 300. Uh, we've got a 213, 250. Um, now, Manus, I believe. I, I don't know if I'm authorised for this, but no, I believe Manus is selling his 210. So there's a yep. private sale there. Nice. Someone might be interested in. Um, there's an Osset Day coming uh, up. Yes, I, I this had weekend. A, I had a call from a it's guy. It's actually this weekend. It wasn't it's last weekend. This it's weekend. this weekend. Yes, this weekend. Um, but I had a call from a gentleman that bought a 24-inch 1919 version Osset yep. for his brother. Um, an elderly gentleman, and they used to ride trials years and years ago, and he bought it for him, and he's he's been thoroughly enjoying it, but he he had a little crash, and he's hurt his ankle and that, so he thinks he'll sell it now. Yep. So so yep. if you want a mint 24-inch um, Osset... Nice. And they're now, nice to ride too. Yeah, they are nice. But the thing that, to notice is that this one is what they call the 1919 version. So it's got 19 front, 19 rear. Now, it's specifically designed for skate parks and stuff yep, like yep, that. Yep. So it doesn't have the 17-inch Trolls rear, but you could you could probably convert them if you needed to. So, yeah. So events, what have we got? What's our next event? So we've got the Kids Osset Day coming up Monday um, in 2J. Yep. There you go. It's the end of the show. That's, That's it. it. Okay. That's it. Done. Pull it off. <laughs> We're done and dusted. <laughs> but no, we've got the um, second Osset Challenge for the kids on this Sunday at the Pinto's at property in 2J. Oh, yeah? Cam- camping? You... Yes, from Saturday afternoon. Um, you'll be in that we'll be from the paddock. We'll all be signposted. You'll see Neil and I there in the in the van and the... Right. Not that, the van. That's Sorry, behind the, the house, isn't behind it? Behind the house, yep. yep. But yep. Um, Max will have it all um, signposted so you can out um saturday afternoon yeah. uh i will suggest maybe bring some wellies and some umbrellas and change yep. of clothes Good. and that they are saying we're in for some rain 50 percent chance but 50%. still yeah yep. there is rain um but it's a beautiful and place we, and we know how much kids love rain and mud. rain mud puddles <laughs> you know just everything. um so yeah that's going to be a really great um day bring some morning tea to share and then AJS are going to put on a sausage roll oh. while we do a certificate ceremony yes. awesome. for all the kids that will come. Yeah. Um, so that's one that we're pretty excited to be sponsoring and going to. Um, thinking, oh, you're not going to be there, but you will be there. I will for that be one. there. That's, that's my last event. Yeah, last event. Before and then I head off to the Fink. you're off to the Fink on Tuesday with Tuesday. Paul. Yep. So yep. then it's sayonara to you and Neil and I have got the show for like six weeks. Oh, oh! no. There goes my ratings. Oh, Down. Really? Hey? Oh. <laughs> and then, um, and and then, then after that, got? Got we've the got the Blackwood. Oh. So um, that is going to be a fantastic event. Oh, um, awesome. I'm actually looking forward okay. to it. So after, what is it, 16 years of being around trials, I'll be actually riding, riding my Blackwood. first um, oh, awesome. Should be a lot awesome. easier than walking around 30 weeks pregnant with Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> I think. You think? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so, um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. So, um, yeah. no, we're, we're really cool. excited to be going down no there worries. for that. And, and that's camping from Friday yep. on. Um, you go um, turn right at the Curup Tavern, head down the Upper Capel Road, it's only two it's to three, three kilometres on your far. left-hand side, and that's the camping spot. Yeah, you'll see the MD trailer yeah. there. But just note, for people who are just going to be... Note, where the camp is different to where the event will run from, the pits. Yep. So you need to be prepared to be able to camp and then move your bikes up to the the, the pits. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the actual, where you get into the riding venue is actually in between the camp spot and the Curup Tavern. Curup Tavern, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so that's, that's great. Good, that's going to be a good one. And again, yeah. it's it's well advised to bring some winter wet, woolies wet gear and, and wet stuff. gear. And no worries. Awesome. Yes, I expect it to be, with how cold we've had it, Yeah. I yeah. expect it to be very, very <laughs> cold down there. So thank God we have a diesel heater. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely good stuff there. And, and then and then we get head off to the yeah I think we have a week's break a week is it two yeah well a week or two um yeah. and 
and we're into Crossman's for the first Prestige Winter Series. So the interclubs, interclubs, um, and that one's going to be awesome for camping as well. Yeah, yeah, the Crossman's Um, a great one for camping. And And you know, just just it's straight off Albany Highway, straight into the property. Yeah. Um, and um, and then because that's the first of the club championships series for the year, so the six rounds. It's an interclub between the AJS and the Parthy. So for any new members, so this is the start of the club championship round. Yes, so this yeah. is this is going to be fun. Hopefully yeah. it's not as wet and cold as it was last year. Well, that that, that be... was a wet one, wasn't it? Oh, jeez. Oh, I've never <laughs> felt rain that cold before. 